trial of your faith. A trial of your faith could be standing on the promises through faith for a physical healing. That's true. Um, that's not what this video is particularly addressing. I'm talking about a trial that's concerning your freedom and liberty in Christ. You found something in Jesus that the unbelieving church or the world doesn't have, and that's liberty. That's being set free. When you have been given liberty, it's like taking a slave and say, take the chains off of him, set him free. Now he's, he's been given liberty. We have a statue of liberty where you can come to a country and have freedom. See, So when it's talking about a trial of your faith in relationship to this, think about it like this. Jesus come out and said, I'll forgive people of their sins. Now the scribes and Pharisees surrounded him and said, you don't keep the Sabbath. You're breaking the law. You're making yourself be God. And, and the fact that he told people he could forgive their sins, just made, it made the scribes and Pharisees, the religious zealots of that time period, explode in anger and violence towards him. He simply wanted to love people and give them the opportunity to be free from sin. But evil people who want to keep sinning and have a religion as a mask become angry. Can that happen to you as a Christian? Let's take a look at the scripture. 2 Corinthians 8, 2. How that in a great trial of affliction, the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded unto the riches of their liberty. That's a real poetic speech, but you got to look at that word liberty. They were having a great trial of affliction. Now that is something to do with their liberty because Jesus set them free from sin. And they're telling people the good news. The evil people with evil hearts, especially those that are hiding behind a mask of religion. And they become very violent towards this person, creating a trial of affliction. And, and they want to take this Christian with their newfound liberty. They want to jam them into this trial and hurt their spirit and, and break their will and drive them back to Satan. This happens all the time in false Christian churches. They will use a false teaching of grace. There's true teaching of grace. You can't save yourself. You can't even muster up enough power to stop sinning by yourself. This is all power given to you by Jesus. He forgives you of your sins because of what he did on the cross. And then... He gives you the power to walk holy and stop sinning. But these persecutors, these, these false brethren, uh, it makes their blood boil because they're still of their father, the devil, committing sin. It says in Hebrews 11.36, and others, this is talking about, like I said in the beginning, you can have a trial over a physical problem. You can have a trial needing financial help. You can have trials in different areas. Maybe your car breaks down. And this is a trial. There's all different ways. When you're standing on the promises, you might have a trial to see if you will stand and, and have a testimony of faith or whether you'll cave in. But this particular video is over people coming after you because you have been saved. They claim they're saved, but they're not because they haven't changed. Now, others had trials of cruel mockings, Hebrews 11, 36, and scourgings. That means they beat you. Yeah, moreover of bonds and imprisonment. You walk out into the public and say, Jesus loves you all and will set you free from sin. Come on, you don't need to be an alcoholic no more. You don't need to be a prostitute no more. You don't need to be filled with angry, uh, anger and evil thoughts. Jesus will take this away. You can walk in the Spirit and be a holy and peculiar person. When you say that, those people out there that have an evil heart will become very angry because that light, not you even directing it towards them, just speaking it, that light shines on their darkness and exposes them as, as uh, the, the serpents and scorpions and vipers and snakes and evil things that they are. It just shines a light on it. And they're hiding and masquerading behind a Christian religion. Now, I said a Christian religion, and, and I was referring to every window doctrine. Why is this important? Because I'm addressing Christian people, and Revelation 2 and 3 says, Repent, or else you will be thrown into seven years of tribulation. Jesus is trying to wake people up. Awake to righteousness and sin not, for some have not the knowledge. Isn't that what Paul said? Oh, and yet they run to you and they say, oh, Paul sinned all the time. He was, he was just a, a, an evil person, but Jesus forgave him and let him stay evil because that's just the way we all are. No, Paul said, awake to righteousness and sin not. He said, also said, I write to you that you sin not. Now, how do you get out of the mess? You got an advocate named Jesus. He's God. He'll forgive you and give you the power so you can miraculously walk in the spirit. And that power, that, that miraculous power of God will help you and guide you and teach you. And that power will, you can use it to crucify your flesh because you love him and you want to be like him, okay? 1 Peter 1, 7, watch this. The trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perishes, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Do you understand what that means? That means that this trial is actually going to do you good. Now, I'm going to talk as if I'm on the street. If you have enough people ridicule you and pound on you and treat you bad and throw you down, eventually you can get sick skinned. And you no longer, and you no longer have your heart on your shirt sleeve. Never 
This is my warning. Never allow your heart to be on your shirt sleeve. Don't do it. Because people will come and stab it. Don't do it. Take no thought. Jesus said it over and over. Take no thought. There are no good thoughts. None. Let the mind of Christ be in you. Speak the words of the Bible. That's what you want. But the trial of your faith could be Satan trying to put these thoughts in your mind. People don't like you. You say you can quit sinning. How dare you? That's the accuser of the brethren. You'll find out when you preach the good news, they come and say, you're a sinner. You are a sinner. And you go, no, Jesus set me free. Aha, you're a liar now. They'll come after you with daggers and they want to hurt your heart. Never wear it on your shirt sleeve. So when it's tried with fire, when, you're, when your faith is tried with fire, it might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. So your trial is actually something that will make you a better person, a stronger person. So in the end, you can start talking to young people and other people and you can help them because you became strong in the faith like Stephen was. 1 Peter 4, 12. Beloved, think it not strange. Now listen to this carefully. Concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you, as through, as though, some strange thing has happened to you. Think it not strange. You're going to be tried. But let me tell you something. When you make a testimony of faith in your own life, Jesus, forgive me of all of my sins. Jesus, give me the power to walk holy. Let me walk in the Spirit with the power of the Holy Spirit, crucifying my flesh, so I can be an overcomer. That's your testimony. You know what happens? You'll have a trial of your faith. And then, when you walk by a faith, not by sight, and you have a testimony through that trial, it will make you stronger. God will strengthen you and temper you by having these trials of your faith, and it can be evil people all around you. Say, for instance, you don't want to celebrate pagan holidays, and they all attack you for it. And if you say, you know, we can be kind to one another and loving to one another, and that offends them because they hate a particular thing you're saying. I'm telling you, the trial of your faith is more precious than gold that perishes. It will, it will, it will make you glow and make you strong and make the light of God shine. And when you start walking in faith, that's when you're going to see something change in your life dramatically. The gifts of the Spirit, of the Holy Spirit, will start manifesting in your life. And if you have the enemy come at you in the spiritual realm, either inside a person that's possessed or even outside, all you do is come against it with the name of Jesus. Because the darkness fears the name of Jesus. I've seen this over and over. You have to walk in the Spirit and take no thought. You have to have a testimony of 100% faith. That's how you stand in faith when you are in the middle of a trial of your faith. So give your heart to Jesus. Watch every word that comes out of your mouth. It is that important because it says in the Bible that your tongue is, is hard to control. So you take your tongue and have a confession of faith. Mm -hmm. You can bless or you can curse. Bless. Follow Jesus and overcome all things. God bless you.